brings me great pleasure to meet you all on the special occasion actually two special occasions one a very very happy new year and two we are celebrating the centenary of the great maestro nagaswara maestro nagaswara ese chelvan nagaswara kala nidhi karakuruchi p arunachalam the music world itself is buzzing with various uh, reminiscences about him articles written on him uh, concert recordings are being put up and uh, now narad bringa is also joining the party by bringing you a very 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 special concert to me you know you know i have been a seeker of uh, tarakurchi arnashlam's concert for over the last 20 years and i believe this particular concert is probably one of their very 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 best of his renditions that we have and i'm very glad that nada pranga chose to you know enhance the quality of this recording and bring it and make it available for public to enjoy i'm not going to i mean i've been asked to speak about uh, this concert and the personality uh, i'm not going to of course this is not a lecture demonstration nor a biographical sketch being given on him so i'm just going to give a brief background about this particular concert and maybe a few pointers on you know what i enjoyed most i haven't heard this concert uh, recently but this is one of the concert which is etched in my memory so i am just going to talk whatever comes to my mind so if there are some slips uh, if my mind is playing some games uh, if there are some errors uh, i first of all apologize for that uh, having said that this particular concert uh, was uh, you know conducted in 1961 as part of the adivale festival in sri lanka you know i just to understand adivale itself uh, is you know it's a, a very very long tradition i think uh, uh, it has been happening for over 130 140 years if i'm not wrong and uh, one unique feature is artists uh, especially artists of great repute have been given a platform to perform and when karakurchi arnachalam of course was in his peak he was definitely you know one of the most uh, invited artists to sri lanka and uh, in fact he and sri lankan uh, rasikas always had a very very special bond i mean if you see geographically as well you know the it's just uh, one uh, you know see right away right and uh, in fact uh, you know he was in a written contract that every year at least bare minimum during the 7th and 8th day of the trichandur festival karakurchi arnashalam would perform that was on a written contract he had given and signed contract to the uh, temple authorities actually i read somewhere uh, that you know the history about uh, the adivale festival itself uh, is something unique where uh, traditionally the kadirkama murugan is the very famous uh, murugan deity of sri lanka and uh, during the yearly festival the bhaktas would carry the kavadi and visit uh, the kadirkama and uh, once uh, it happened that because of some reason that you know people Uh, they were not able to travel all the way up to kadirkam and uh, the you know the bhaktas they decided that they would also start another festival in colombo and uh, that is how the adivale festival itself came into existence and every year i think it's it continues even now and several legends have performed in this and in unfortunately for us we have got uh, the recording of this uh, particular adivale festival concert and uh, for two reasons this is great I mean, one because it was in 1961 so that was really the peak and peak of uh, you know karakurchi arnachalam and uh, the second reason is the other artists who have performed the thing in this case particularly you know the legendary neeramangal shanmuga vadivelu and the yalpanam dakshinamurthy you know who was uh, regarded as the kaliyuga nandi these two have been i mean they are just titans of uh, music i mean i wouldn't call even tavil or nagasur just or even carnatic music i would just say they are great legends of any music i mean all music put together 
and they have performed and the way they have enhanced the whole experience itself right? there are some cases where you know i mean especially you know uh, before the raga starts the, you know, according to the nagasuru tradition it would start with a small uh, tavil prelude there have been times where you know i have heard this tavil prelude and i just go back to the beginning of it and start listening to it all over i mean imagine that i am such a big fan of karakur sharma sulum but by just listening to this tavil i could just not take my mind away and even start listening to what uh, the nagasuram player had to play you know such is the power of the tavil rendition you know and i think it's a great lesson uh, for the current generation upcoming tavil players as well on you know how how it is not just the mathematics or the calculations and but also how it is beautifully you know uh, uh, encapsulated with the overall aesthetics of it i mean for somebody i mean especially right when tavil is being played it's not that everybody who listens to it follows all the complexities which is being played but there is still some magic in it that you know even a common man is able to just you know i mean you can see i mean even in the, the marriages if you see uh, when two tavil players play a taniyavartanam invariably people will be shaking their head and you know uh, flow going along with the flow whether they understand what is going on or not right that is the magic of that uh, whole instrument itself and when such legendary people play on it and it, it it's just an ecstatic experience and uh, and basically you know when and then the onus is on uh, karakur siara to actually you know you know take his playing to the another plane where he is not just overshadowed by this legend and he manages to do that and this is a very very beautiful concert runs over for over 4 hours you know so it's a very extensive uh, concert fortunately we have the recording so the concert starts with the, the gambhira natai song you know jnana vinayakane and i think uh, i don't know i mean i i don't think it would be wrong if i said uh, it was karakur char who who actually popularized this song even though there are been some uh, vocal renditions of it but someone who had regularly performed it and people related to the song with his renditions i would say you know i can i think it is fair to give the credit to karakur char to have popularized this song i mean it starts with a very brisk phrase with brisk pace and then comes a beautiful arabi you know this is something again very very unique to him in arabi i think uh, we have pretty much several renditions of uh, karakursha arabi invariably he has played the pancharatna kriti sadinchane and when somebody plays the pancharatna kriti it's almost as if you know there is nothing more exists on the prakar for the artist to <clears throat> supplement it but that is true for you know common people or you know but the common rules are not applicable for you know geniuses of the world right so karakurshar invariably you know adds his own kalpana swarams once the krithi is rendered and this is also not an exception in this particular case it is a very very lengthy exercise of you know the give and take between the two nagaswara martyrs by the way the accompanying artist is also another karakurchi arunachalam karakurchi m arunachalam and this is one of the usually he underplays a lot you know he, he usually uh, tries to restrict himself and allows karakurchi p arunachalam to you know showcase his talent or his ideas more and just supplements it even though he himself had tremendous talent but these are some rare occasion for example the kalpana swarams are some rare occasion where you can also feel the other nagasuram artists in full flow first of all you know just you know keep maintaining the tempo or the idea of what karakursi p arunachalam brings in that itself is not a joke and to actually match it swara par swara par avarta par avartana that is something it is um, i mean that shows how talented he was and um, and how well they blended and also i think people already by now know through several other uh, you know reminiscences that uh, once karakurchi had passed away the other karakurchi arnachalam also stopped performing he said that you know having performed with him for so many years 
I don't feel that you know I can touch the Nagasuram again. And he actually you know gave up the Nagasuram as a profession itself and took to farming and other things to make a living for himself. Such great was their bond. And that musical bond, you can actually feel it in the way they exchange in the Arabi. So after the Arabi, uh, there is a very, very elaborate rendition of uh, Panturadi. The Panturadi, not only in this concert, even in other concerts, whenever you hear, you can always relate so much of, you know, uh, TNR music in it, you know, the approach itself. If you look at, you know, Kala Pramana, the Kala Pramana is there for Alapana also. Especially in the Nagaswaram, you know, they, the Tawil Vidwan also has a role to play. He plays that basic Chatustram and that Chatustram has a Kala Pramanam. And if you look at the Panturadi Alavana which uh, Kara Kirsha enters, it is usually on the higher side, you know, and the kind of flourishes, the kind of, you know, the uh, runs he goes from through the scale and the kind of jaros he implements, you know, kind of flashes. And of course, all those beautiful, subtle things he brings into and those long carways that he employs. Uh, that is something, you know, Panturali is one raga where you can actually see how Karakursha has imbibed the essence of TNR style of playing or approach of playing closely. This is a very, very good example of that. And it is also very interesting to see in other cases where he has used this idea, but he has also come out on his own, you know, with his own approach to other ragas. So it's basically like making a statement that, dude, it's not that I cannot play like Tirna. Okay. It's not because of my incapability, I play a different style. This is something I can do. But by the way, I, I also have a style of, his, of my own. So, you know, I choose to do that for other ragas. To kind of... Every time I listen to the Panturali, I hear this statement loud and clear. So the Panturali is followed by a wonderful Mohanam. You know, when I say, mo, you know, wonderful, in all counts, from the Alapana, the way the, you know, the towel embellishes the whole uh, Kriti, um, there's, there's a particular, you know, I would say an interlude between, you know, the Pallavi and the Anupallavi section. I mean, I don't know what, how else you can call it, you know, that, that nonchalant playing and the enhancement that the double gives, I mean, that's probably for a, a less than a minute, maybe for 50 to 60 seconds. But the kind of the shades of Mohanam you get in uh, when Karakosha plays, uh, it's, it's amazing. You have to listen to it to believe. You know, it, and there are such examples in other ragas, in other concerts as well, where, you know, when he is rendering a Kriti, and suddenly, you know, the raga takes over. I mean, that is kind of a philosophy of many great people as well. The raga, or, you know, exploring the raga, or bringing out the raga being the whole objective or the essence of their own playing or singing has been the hallmark of many great Vidwans. And uh, Karakurshya is also not an exception to it. And uh, you can also see that in this beautiful Mohanam. And after the Mohanam, he takes up Aberi. Aberi in the sense the current day what we call as Aberi and many traditionalists what they call as the Karnataka Devagandari. There are, I mean, it, first of all, you know, the Nagumomo song, it has been a very, very famous one. Uh, but, you know, in vocal concerts, <coughs> two people are credited for popularizing it. One is the uh, great Musri Supramaniyar. The other is the great uh, Balamurli Krishna. In the Nagasuram world as well, it's a very, very famous song. In fact, it is so popular that <clears throat> almost on every wedding that people demand the Nagasuram artist to play this Nagumo. Whether it, the actual meaning of the song or the, whether the bow of the song actually fits into the, you know, the mood of a wedding, that is questionable. Even though that is questionable, people relate to some kind of a joy with this whole song. But that credit actually must go to Karakurshi Arunachalam. He was the one who kind of, you know, structured the Nagasaram uh, Paddhati of playing, the Patantram of playing the Nagumamu because it's a, it's not just the, you know, a blind rendition of what he will. He has embellished it so much. There are 
so many beautiful glides and beautiful sangatis that he brings into picture and it it's almost like a playful exercise the whole song itself and the wonderful camaraderie is seen between him and his accompanying artist but as a, on the, to the total contrast at least in this particular contrast i <coughs> vividly remember there's a lot of uh, you know very emotional elements in the way he actually rendered the raga alap you know to very close to the actual mood of uh, the song conveyed in the lyrics the kriti rendition is totally different it's, more, it's a lot more ebullient but uh, the raga alapana is uh, somewhat you know melancholic you know that's a contrast that i had i vividly remember i hope uh, it is in this particular concert because there is more than one nagma who rendition that we have um after that i believe uh, after the aberi he takes up uh, bhairavi for uh, you know elaboration and then he plays puluve and uh, i believe uh, this also i mean we are very very lucky that way that you know we have had almost pretty much all the heavy weight ragas uh, uh, rendered by karakurchar in the various recordings that we have we have kalyani we have shankara bharata we have uh, todi we have kamboji we have shanmuga priya that way we also have have the, this bhairavi to add to that kitty of those heavy weight ragas and it is beautifully rendered and then uh, he takes up uh, the raga for the pallavi which is uh, kamboji in this case and the the whole uh, kamboji experience itself is it, the whole the pace of that alapana itself is so relaxed and uh, the mood and and it is kind of you know you know that you know this man is going to explore every nook and corner of this raga thread bare you know and uh, he just full he does full justice to it by exploring across the octaves of the kamboji and uh, something very very unique i have not heard anyone else render it this way in many of the ragas which karakurchar takes for elaboration right especially for the pallavi what he does is after the raga alapana he starts playing swaras so when you play kalpana swaras right it's usually for some kind of a refrain right you just for some place in the song or for an edupu in the pallavi or some some edam otherwise it has no refrain right how do you so and that also plays a huge role on you know what are the kind of shades you are going to explore right uh, in this particular case where he renders swaras it is just a very very total free flowing swaras or sarvalagu swaras if you want if you may want to put a term on it so since it has no refrain it is just free flowing it starts at the lower speed and slowly you know it goes into the second speed and because of the no constraint or a no refrain that he has to have in his mind the kind of contours he explores right it is very 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 unique you know it is just free flowing uh, just to you know compare it to a current day analogy of you know sangeeta kalanidhi sanjay has you know experimented recently with what is called as the short notes there it is not about any song but he takes up a raga and uh, for about a minute he you know he goes into different contours of the true swara right and he also shows some glimpses some unexpected glimpses isn't it i would say this is something very similar which was done long long back by i'm not saying both are same but i think the idea is same that the flow you know the over the kind of the free flow and the exploring Uh, totally different un unentered territories of the ragas and the kind of shades kind of moods that are being portrayed i think that comes out a lot more obviously in when you take up a scale or raga like shanmuga priya you cannot take too much of a liberty when you when you handle a very heavy weight classical raga like a kamboji but nevertheless the rendition is beautiful and then it is followed by a beautiful taniyavartanam between the two legendary tamil maestros 
and then the actual pallavi starts usually in karapachi art concert the pallavi itself is a vehicle to play raga malika swaras let me put it that way because you know he would have already he has already played the raga alapana he has also played the kalpana swaras as a sarvalavi swaras already before the pallavi in this particular case uh, i think he renders the famous uh, parimala rangapate as a pallavi and then he renders some four or five beautiful ragas you know elaborately in the uh, in the ragamalika section and then the whole thing comes to usually uh, i mentioned about this you know the pallavis are vehicles for ragamalika where you know he wouldn't render the swaras in that particular pallavi not elaborately when he starts the pallavi but this concert is probably a slight exception to that because he also renders that sarvalagu swaras but not you know so elaborately he renders it and then he leaves it for taniyavartanam but he also has some more swaras to explore in kambhoji which he does after he starts the famous parimala rangapate pallavi and uh, he renders the swaras in the lower speed and the higher speed and then he goes into the beautiful ragamalika so after the ragam and pallavi and uh, the ragamalika swaras then uh, what is traditionally called as the tukda section starts but then the tukda although the name says tukda that is not so rendered so lightly it is actually rendered with so much of verb and it was one of the high points in and one of the most looked forward to um, pieces in uh, karakursya's concert and several of those pieces have been uh, very very famous and also this is where you know some of the elements of the nayandi madam background which actually comes into you know I, i'm not sure about this particular concert but in general you know when he plays a sensuality or a mand uh, especially in the or a mishra mand in this kind of uh, i think he has rendered the bajare bhaiya of uh, meera bhajana not sure if it is part of this concert but i vividly remember there is a beautiful tamare kutta tadagamidi you know the way he renders and way he emotes i think uh, i would like to quote uh, from a beautiful book uh, written by uh, nagaswara maestro sempanar koil rajanna where he talks about a concert where he renders chinnanjiri kiliye and then when this line of kannathil muttamittal comes he just you know the raga takes over and he plays that line for over 45 minutes embellishing it in so many different ways and that itself you know I mean that became the highlight of the whole concert, and before that he would have played for several hours the heavy kriti, the raga alapan, and all that. But even as you know, a small song, raga malika, which is played at the end of the concert, can inspire an artist of the caliber of Karakuchyarna Chalam so much that he could bring out the raga of it for over forty five minutes. So that is the kind of uh, a musician he was. In this particular case. he renders this uh, tamare put tatakamadi beautifully but i also vividly remember this english note you know english note i mean how much you can improvise in an english note that is something which has been there and you know it's is so famous and when you listen to it you feel like it's all done right i mean as long as i mean people will like it because i i'm sure there are chits coming in and you know you want to satisfy Uh, so many, I mean, different kinds of audience, and there would be some kind of audience who would want, who would like such lilt, and you know, they would enjoy this. But you listen to this particular case where you know, Karakurchi uh, Arnachalam renders the English note. I mean, it's mind-boggling. You, the kind of, I mean, that is that's a wonderful exhibition of the, you know, his control over the instrument. on some of the glides that he provides some of the phrases he provides are not something you can you typically relate to even in carnatic music and let alone in nagasur no you 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 don't hear such i mean it's almost as if a string section is operating in a western classical concert or things like that. some of those you know the plain notes or the glide that he you know executes in this english note is something very unique even in a piece like an english note the point i want to make is he embellishes a lot with his own creativity and that is something which 
comes out to the uh, fore. And I think he renders, I think by the time, you know, I believe he has run out of time. So somebody must have pointed to him that, hey, I think we should close the concert now. So in a Drake next speech, probably within 50 seconds, he renders the whole Tirupugal in Hamsanandi and then he plays the Mangalam. And it's, you, I mean, I must have in this law, I mean, I think I got this concert probably some 12, 13 years back. When I, obviously when I got this concert, it's for several months, that was the only concert I used to listen to. And then over these years as well, you know, I must I keep going back to this concert. So I, it is, I, it, till date, I don't feel like, you know, I have totally absorbed all of it. Every time I feel like I can actually, you know, learn something new from it, I can definitely think of some nuance that I have not noticed in the, in my previous hearing. And I think such is the renditions of great geniuses. It's never that, you know, they run out of, uh, you know, uh, they, they run out of ideas. Even in their rendered rendition, which are already recorded, it's almost as if there is some magic, magical realism which is happening where, you know, they come and actually insert a new nuance for the listener to listen to it. I mean, these are all probably definitely exaggeration, but but for sure, you know, as a listener, when we grow, we tend to appreciate it even more. The fascination only grows. I mean, there are some kinds of music where, you know, you listen to it 20 years back and now you listen to it and you think like, did I actually like it then? You know, but that is the difference between an ordinary musician and, you know, real geniuses where it doesn't matter after how many years you listen to it and how many times you listen to it. They always uh, keep you thinking. They, I mean, even if you're not thinking, they elevate you as a, you know, just as a listener. Um, that is the greatness. You know? So I hope... Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm sure I have taught, I mean, I think uh, over the time I've become very emotional. I might have expressed something uh, probably too much. Now I do think that I'm just standing in the way between you and that beautiful concert. So I don't want to do that anymore. I'll wish you one more time. Happy New Year and please enjoy the concert. Thank you.